Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'll show you how to find and call game functions in an MMORPG called Tibia. Since official game client is protected by BattleEye, we'll be using their old client which is used on private hosted servers and it doesn't have any anti-debug methods in it. So the private server I chose is Aurora Global, it's pretty active and it's been up for almost 5 years now. So click download. I'm going to be using Oli debugger, you can use x86 or Cheat Engines debugger if you like. If we need some IDE, I'm using Visual Studio. Now let's first enter the game. When you enter the game, you'll be, you are moving with arrow keys. It's a 2D uh, MMORPG. Let's attach our debugger. I'm attaching Oli file, attach tibia. Once the debugger is attached, you'll see paused over here, you can press this button over here or press F9 and you can see our game is unfrozen. Now go to Oli, press Alt E, you'll see all the modules that are loaded in the process, double click on Tibia, do it again until you see module Tibia here. Now let's press Control A, so Oli analyzes the Tibia and it tells us, it guesses some functions for us and some calls for us. Now the first thing what I like to do when I'm hacking games is I like to find functions that I know that are controlled by the client so like it prints something on the screen for example and there is a function if you like walk to a wall or you use a, a ground you can see a string pops here. Let's go to Oli, right click search for all reference text strings Right click, search text, type sorry not possible, entire scope, okay. Well, this doesn't look like the string we saw. Control L to go to the next one. This looks interesting, let's try Control L once more. There are no mores, okay. Press enter. We see that this string goes into ECX and there is a call here. So let's put a breakpoint on call by pressing F2. Go back to game, walk to a wall, breakpoint get hits, okay. Press F2 again to take off the breakpoint and F9 to run the game again. Press enter to go to the call. Uh, let's. This looks interesting already because we see that the function is called like thousand times already. We can see it's being called like a lot of times. So this already looks promising. So let's put breakpoint on it. And if we go to wall, it hits F9 again. And for example, let's try to use the, the floor. It says you cannot use this. So this is most likely the, the function that is responsible for printing something. F9. So let's walk to a wall again take off this breakpoint, click on the stack to return, press enter and F9, so we unfreeze the game. Okay, now we need to see the parameters that this function needs and we need to know what uh, calling convention it is. Well, we see something is moved into ECX and that's a string. Let's go to MSDN calling conventions it says stored in registers, then pushed on stack. So we already know that these are not the ones because they are pushed on to the stack. And this is moved. If we go to the function and we follow it, we can see that it pops the registers from the stack. So it most likely looks like a fast call. We can check it out. So it says the first two dword or smaller arguments that are found in the argument list from left to right are passed in ECX and EDX. We don't see the EDX, but that's okay. All other arguments are passed on the stack from right to left. Call function pops the arguments from the stack. So we call this function and it is popping the arguments of the stack. So it looks most likely like a fast call to me. 
maybe it's something else. We'll we'll test it. Let's open Visual Studio. I pre-made a solution, a DLL, pretty much. I'll show it to you. It's a simple DLL, pretty much the same source code as uh, first internal hack by Rake. We have our DLL main. It creates a thread, hack thread. It allocates console, then opens a stream so we can write to the console. We print hello there, we are injected. We're getting module base by get module handle. It's getting base uh, module address. And then we have our while true loop. If we press end, it uh, breaks out of the loop. We close the stream to the uh, console. We close the console and we exit the thread. So now we need to declare and call the function. So let's type type def. Oh, another thing we need to see if the function returns something. Press minus to go back. It doesn't look like it's returning anything because it says ret return it doesn't say like how many bytes it returns it, it would say return four so it means it returns four bytes it can be a number or anything so it just returns so we know it doesn't return anything so it's a void then open we'll do a fast call pointer then let's call it print func then in these brackets you enter the arguments it uh, it needs so as we can see the arguments are pushed in ecx and that's a string in c++ that's a char pointer a char array press f9 and take the breakpoint off so I'll type char pointer and some message. Now we need to declare it. Okay. And here we are using it. And here you need to pretty much uh, enter a module base because it's not always uh, located in the same place. So we need to get the RVA of the of the base address. So let's open calculator. Type in hex AC four five four zero minus Alt E. So we go in the modules, press right click on it, copy to clipboard and press base. And just control V to paste it equals this hex number. Let's cop copy that hex number. So in here we need to enter the address we are calling. So we are calling the address on of module base plus this offset to it semicolon I'm getting the error where oh sorry <laughs> I'm pretty pretty bad at C++ okay it works so far okay let's copy this and enter some other key to it let's put in numpad1 and if we press numpad1 we will call our function print func with the argument const char so we'll just put hello from my dll and semicolon here okay now let's build it be sure to build it in a release mode Control B to build it. Okay, yes, we see the it's it built. Let's take off any breakpoints. Okay. Now we can use a guided hacking injector. 
I'm going to select the process, type tibia, add DLL, and let's inject. Okay, it says we are injected. And if we press 1, it should print something here. So I press 1, it says hello from my DLL. And we can see it still works, like sorry not possible. And if I press 1, it, it prints something in it. That's the print function. If we press end, it will close our DLL. Next thing, we need to find the speech function. And how are we going to do that? Well, we know that we speak by sending a packet to the server with a certain message in it. How game client speaks to the server? Well, it speaks through Winsock. It's a basic uh, library for basic socket library in C++. So we can control search for all intermodule calls. It will display all the calls that this module is uh, calling outside. So if we type send, we see multiple of these. Let's go to the bottom one and put a breakpoint, but hello. And why I minimize this? Because if we put breakpoint, it breakpoint might get hit by, for example, a heartbeat packet. So I want to be sure that it gets hit only when we actually say something. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put I'm gonna press F2 to put a breakpoint and I'm gonna quickly go to the game window and press enter to say something. So F2 go to game window and press OK. Oh, we already see uh it's in the EPX register and if we scroll down we can see it's on the stack as well so it looks promising already f2 to take it off f9 oh the hello triggers the the mpc but anyways let's go to the start of that function and we'll do it again so we we'll, we are essentially tracing back backwards to to that function let's do it again f2 go to a window and press hello it says return to this address. So I'm gonna do F2 to break, take the breakpoint off, go to stack and press enter and F9. Now it's it looks network that CPP. So it looks like we're in network protocol. Let's go to start of the function. We see it's being called by a lot of functions. So it looks promising let's you can press uh, shift and arrow key up so it brings the message again do the same thing put the breakpoint and go in the game we can see it on stack again we are going backwards we see some switch cases Let's go to the start of the function. Well, this looks interesting. Talk mod say, whisper, yell, talk to NPC. Hmm. Because if you go and press this little button over here, if there is no lines to it, it will whisper. If there are two lines to it, it, was, it will yell. But it doesn't let me yell. <laughs> Whatever. Go to the start and let's do the same thing. I put the breakpoint. Oh, look at this. We can still move, so we know that like we are sending packets, but it's not triggered. So we know that it triggers only when we say so. We are in the function pretty much. Let's go backwards. Okay. This is not a chat channel. Let's try at the start of the function again. If we say something, well, it doesn't look interesting at all. Take the breakpoint off, F9. You can press minus to go to the instruction you were before. So we know that this is the call to speech function. And we see two registers above it. 
So we see ECX and EDX. And as I was talking before, first two arguments are passed in ECX and EDX from left to right. So it means the ECX is the first argument. Now we can put a breakpoint here and say something in local chat. If we press this, it's just it just goes uh, down one uh, one line. It pushes, it moves. Sorry, it moves uh, a string in EDX, and then next thing moves a some kind of number in ECX, and then it calls. Okay, so press F9. So we already know that this is probably fast call because at the end of the function we see it's red it doesn't return anything again I'm pressing minus to go back so we need we need to figure out what this ECX is oh sorry we got logged out because we had breakpoint uh, on for too too long at the heartbeat packet didn't go out let's log in again and let's say something guided ha hacking and we do this it's one again let's try to change it for example to two okay we'll press f9 and we see it whispers it didn't it didn't say like if we press f9 now it it says but before it whispered. So we know that this is some kind of an ID to the message we are sending. Let's let's get the RVA to this function. Calculator. It's 8D06C0 minus again Alt E and you can just copy the base and put it in calculator equals this number okay now let's make another instance of this and we'll do something like say function the first parameter press minus again the first parameter was some kind of number and then it was a char pointer so Let's do a int number and then after that we'll do in a const char pointer some kind of message. Let's make it say func say func. Now we need to point where we are calling it. So copy the hex type 0 x and this address now let's make so when we press uh, numpad 2 we are calling the function to say something oops I need this here okay now let's delete all of this and say it says number well let's just try to recreate what what we saw in a debugger it, it was one and then some kind of message will just write hello hello there let's try to build it it probably won't work yep and i'll be at the sign to ah okay <laughs> again i messed up i need to do this let's build it cannot open well because it got stuck in the debugger now we'll close the debugger okay we built it let's inject it again we need to select the prime okay injected we are injected if we press one on numpad it should print something yes and if we press two it should say hello there yeah it says and we we see that it's not it's actually sending a packet because the mpc got triggered by hello yeah it, that works so yeah, that's pretty much it. In 
if people are interested, I could maybe start making a series of this to maybe like make a bot, you know, a healer and maybe a K bot. Uh, so it automatically attacks creatures on screen and uses some kind of spells. And so it loots the creatures and yeah, that's it. Hopefully you learn something and see you soon.